And the reality is, is this type of system is designed to do one thing and one thing only. It's to get you to spend more money and spending more money is ultimately what keeps you poor. So you could say that this type of system is designed to keep you poor. As somebody who spent the last 20 years of my life selling debt, yes, that's almost my entire adult life, I find the Apple savings account interesting, but probably not for the reasons that you're thinking. No, it's not the fact that the Apple savings account took in more than $940 million, that's almost a billion dollars worth of deposits in the first four days, or that ever since that time, people have been having an absolutely terrible time trying to withdraw their money. And in the grand scheme of things, $940 million worth of deposits only represents the equivalent of 3,600 fully funded accounts, given the fact that the Apple Savings account has a maximum deposit amount of $250,000. Now, compare that to the fact that there are over 120 million Apple iPhone users alone in the United States, and that several big banks just collapsed with over $100 billion in deposits each, and you can see that so far the success of the Apple Savings account is minimal. But what I find really interesting is all the reasons why you shouldn't get an Apple Savings account. And a lot of that has to do with some of the requirements that come along with it, as well as some of the psychology that credit card companies and banks use in order to retain you as a client and make a ton of money that Apple is now tapping into. But before I get into all the details, my name is Nolan Mathias, and if you want to thrive financially, this is the place for you. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Okay, so obviously the funding numbers in the Apple savings account seem huge in the first couple of days. And granted, for a brand new type of bank account, they were quite large because there's typically a lot of friction in the banking system when it comes to people moving their monies from one institution to another. So to get almost a billion dollars worth of deposits is to be applauded. However, there's a whole bunch of things that people need to understand before they jump into getting an Apple savings account. And no, I'm not talking about the comparison between the interest rate you can get at Apple versus other institutions. I'm talking about the psychology of borrowing money, saving it, and how companies use that to keep you as a client and make a significant amount of money off of you. And there's a whole bunch of problems with the Apple savings account. Let's start first with the fact that in order to get it, you have to apply for an Apple credit card. That is, of course, unless you already have one. And if you already have one, you're probably already an Apple fanboy and you already hate me for making this video but stick with me here because I'm an Apple fanboy as well. I've got pretty much every product under the sun, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm gonna be honest with you about why you perhaps shouldn't get an Apple savings account. So let's just assume for a second that you're not an Apple fanboy and you're one of those people that doesn't already have an Apple card. Well, in order to get the Apple savings account, you're going to need to apply for one. And yes, there's some benefits that go along with getting an Apple card, primarily the fact that you'll get 3% back on purchases at the Apple store and several other really cool companies. However, it also means that you're going to have to apply for credit, which if you're looking to get a mortgage somewhere down the road, or you're going to need other types of credit at some point, could have a damaging effect on your credit score. But here's the bigger problem. It is that the single safest form of a banking product, the savings account, the holy grail of client retention, the holy grail of I'm gonna put money there so it doesn't get touched, the holy grail of I'm saving for something special and I need to keep that money safe and sound is now attached to the single most dangerous type of banking product, which is the credit card. So in order to get the safe product, you need the one that is going to tempt you to buy things, spend more money, create debt, and ultimately end up in a situation where you going to have any savings anyways. So the very nature of the hoops that you're going to have to jump through in order to get this savings account, make it even less likely that you're going to have savings that will earn that 4.15% interest rate. And on top of that, banks are smart. And Apple has partnered with Goldman Sachs on this, probably one of the smartest banks in the world. And they know the numbers on this. They know that the 4.15% they're going to have to pay out on the deposits that they get is going to be significantly outweighed by the 15 to 26% in interest that people are going to have to pay when they end up carrying balances on their credit cards. And no, most people don't have the intention of carrying balances on their credit cards, but when spending is made easy or incentivized, which I'll get to in a minute, it's often long past the moment where people have spent more money than they actually have that they realize that they're going to start to have to carry a balance. And even though the Apple credit card tells you exactly how much interest you're going to have to pay based on how much the payment you're going to make is, if there's no money left in your normal bank account or your savings account, well, guess what? You're just going to have to pay that interest. And once you've started to dig that hole of carrying a balance, it's often really hard to get out of it. And my guess is that over the long term, Goldman Sachs expects that they're going to have far more in credit card balances than they will have in deposits. 
and they will be earning a significant amount of money as people have to pay interest on those large balances. So for a bank like Goldman Sachs, this is a no-lose proposition. Now for Apple, as I talked about in one of my previous videos, which I'll link to at the end, the savings account is the holy grail of client retention. People very rarely move their savings accounts. So Apple knows that once they have that product in place, combined with the Apple credit card and an iPhone, the chances of somebody leaving the ecosystem somewhere down the road are pretty much nil. But here's the real problem with doing your banking system on something that functions as well as an iPhone. And that is that it removes the friction from spending. You see, if you've got your Apple credit card and your Apple savings account attached to your iPhone, and you're instantaneously getting feedback, which is the cash back, the one to 3% that you're getting when you spend money on your Apple credit card, well, that is going to encourage you to spend more money. And take this from somebody who's been in this position where I've earned millions and millions of miles of American Express rewards. When you start to see those rewards stack up, you start to spend more money hoping that you are going to get more rewards so you can go on things like fancier trips. And here's the problem with that. No matter what your cash back is, you're spending significantly more money to earn those rewards. So if you're getting the maximum cash back on the Apple credit card, which is 3%, in order to get $3,000 worth of rewards, which is basically a new MacBook Pro, you're going to have to spend $100,000. So let that sink in. If on a daily basis you're getting one, two, three dollars in cash back, it's going into your savings account and that's accumulating and that's being used as positive feedback in order to get you to use the Apple credit card more often, then that creates a spiral of spending, which ultimately turns into a debt spiral that can end up causing a lot of pain. And the reality is, is this type of system is designed to do one thing and one thing only. It's to get you to spend more money and spending more money is ultimately what keeps you poor. So you could say that this type of system is designed to keep you poor. So at the end of the day, the Apple savings account might be right for you, might not be, but what's important is that you fully consider how these credit cards are designed, how these types of bank accounts are designed, and whether or not you are the type of person that is best suited to have this type of account. Oh, and if you want to see the video I alluded to earlier where I talk about the truth about the Apple savings account and how it's designed to keep you as an Apple client for the long term, make sure you check out this video right here.